Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about water very quickly, uh, specifically in relation to its role in a transport medium such as blood or tissue fluid. Um, <clears throat> so, let's begin. So, we're going we're gonna to look at the structure of water, we are going to look at its properties and then we're going to look at how these properties relate to its function in a transport medium. Okay, so let's begin with the structure, H2O. Okay, now the key point here, the key point here being that this bond right here and also that one has a dipole. Okay, so HO covalent bond has a dipole. And what that means is the electrons, so the covalent bond is a sharing of electrons, and th those electrons are not equally shared. So um, the oxygen is more electronegative, and so the oxygen uh, has a greater share of the electrons. And as the electrons are negatively charged, oxygen therefore carries a slightly more negative charge. So oxygen is Partially negative, partially negative, and the way we denote that is with a delta negative. So if oxygen has a greater share of the electrons, it means that hydrogen has a smaller share, a lesser share of the electrons, and therefore, because the electrons are negative and, and they're mostly around the oxygen, hydrogen is partially positive. Okay, so it's not like a full charge, it's not ionic, but partially positive. Okay? <clears throat> Both of the hydrogens are partially positive. And so we can we can draw a line across the, uh, the water molecule and we can see that it has two poles. It has a negative end and a positive end. So water is a polar molecule with a partial negative and partial positive charge. That's its structure and properties, and, and now we kind of look at how it relates to its function. So because of this, because of this, water can need that drink. Because of this, water can hydrogen bond with other water molecules. Okay? So because we've got this partially negative, that partially positive, when other water molecules are around, water molecules between them form what is called hydrogen bonds. Okay, these are weak, you know, individually weak attractions, but, you know, collectively, if you think of millions and billions and trillions of water molecules, and, you know, that many hydrogen bonds, that can add up, okay? So, it's an attraction between a partially positive hydrogen and a partially negative oxygen. That attraction is called a hydrogen bond. Now, that hydrogen bond results in a lot of water's key properties that make it, uh, that allow it to have this important role as a transport medium. First of all, the hydrogen bonding keeps water cohesive. That means that the water molecules are attracted to each other. And because they're cohesive, then they form a fluid. Okay, and because they form this fluid, uh, it means that uh, contractile forces can be transferred on this fluid. Long story short, this fluid can then be used in mass flow, uh, mass transport systems. Now, the other thing is that because water is polar, because water is polar, it's got these po slightly positive and slightly negative um, charges, 
um, it can then interact. It can interact with other polar or charged particles. Okay, and so what we're what we're talking about here is things like glucose, things like uh, ions such as uh, sodium, chloride, potassium. Amino acids. So, because water has got these partial positive and partial negative charges, it can then interact with uh, the equivalent positive and negative, or the opposite positive and negative charges on other particles, resulting in them being dissolved. Resulting in them being dissolved. So, because it can interact with these particles, it can dissolve them, and because it can dissolve these things, it can transport them, right? It can transport them. So, mass flow, in, mass flow allows water to move. Being polar and therefore being able to dissolve things allows it to move and take other things with it. Um, and the kind of other side thing is that, you know, because water makes up so much of living organisms, it makes up so much of cells, and because living organisms are made of cells, it makes up so much of the resulting organism. Because of that, um, it has this other extra advantage of having a high specific, high specific heat, a high specific heat capacity, which means, and that comes, and that comes back to its hydrogen. Bonds. So those hydrogen bonds take a lot of energy in order to break. So if we want to evaporate water, or if we want to just even raise the temperature of water, it takes a lot of energy to get water moving more. It takes a lot of energy. So you need to put lots of energy in in order to get these water part particles moving because they're stuck to each other with these hydrogen bonds. So it takes a lot of energy to change the temperature of water. And what that means is any organism that has a lot of water, and that's most of them, or all of them, any organism that has a lot of water in it then has got a more stable temperature thanks to that property of water. So the temperature of the organism doesn't fluctuate too much because water is kind of absorbing a lot of the energy from the atmosphere and preventing uh, dramatic temperature changes because of that. So. Because it's got high specific heat capacity due to the hydrogen bonds, organisms are better able to uh, maintain their temperature. So it's, it's kind of like a, uh, it aids the homeostasis of the organisms, though not technically part of that mechanism. So water, okay, water structure results in this uh, dipole nature, and because of the dipole nature, it can hydrogen bond, and because of the hydrogen bonding then, it has these properties which are then related to its function, okay? Mass flow systems, dissolving things, and maintaining the organism's temperature. Okay. <laughs>